The focus on the session is going to be about safe technique, but coincidentally, the safest way to tackle is also the most effective way. So if you want to win games of rugby with your team, then this is going to help you. Before we get into actually making the tackle, we're going to do a wee bit of work on the, on the tackler getting in position to be effective in the tackle. It's a drill I call, call tracking or foot patterning. One, one of the big issues um, for, for the tackler is that the ball carrier is not going to be a sitting duck. So he's not just going to be standing there. He's going to be evasive, um, try and avoid being tackled, and then slip the, slip the tackler. One of the, one of the big um, problems for a tackler is that as, as the ball carrier does step away, that tacklers often get caught in a, in a plant position. Okay, and as the, as the tackler goes away, then uh, this guy here is going to be ineffective because he's having to lunge to, to make the tackle. Not only is he ineffective, but he's dangerous in that he's probably going to have to tackle real low and might get a, a mouthful of boot. The second issue is um, if, if the tackler comes in with a really wide step and the, and the ball carrier moves, then he's in a poor position to, to, make, to make the tackle again. So what we're after is, is foot patterning that allows us as a tackler to get in really close to, to the ball carrier. And if we can, if we can get our, our main tackling foot in nice and close, then we're going to be effective. The, uh, the, the drill is, is simply this. Um, we'll have a, a ball carrier there, a tackler here. We're going to work with the uh, tackler having his, his arms in that position there. So we're going to avoid him actually reaching out to, to make the tackle. Okay, so by doing that, he's always going to keep his arms there. That means that as the ball carrier comes to him and steps, he's going to have to keep moving to, uh, to get his feet in close because he can't put his arms out to make the tackle. Okay, once we're in that position there and he's in the tackle position, then I just want the, the tackler to use his feet to drive the ball carrier back, not using his arms to push him back. So if we just have a look at that, So we've just warmed up uh, using what are called tracking drills, getting, into, getting the feet into a position to, to be effective in the tackle. I just want to get a bit of feedback from the guys about how they found that. So the first question, boys, is I, I made you get your, your arms in close and keep them in close to your body. W what did that do to you in, in that activity? Uh, I really made you keep your feet moving, taking the player to where you wanted to take them. And, and that's exactly what we're after, so that, you know, if we've got a ball carrier here, and uh, I've got my arms in here and I'm not, not allowed to push them out and he moves sideways, so you move sideways. I've got to keep my feet moving to actually make contact with him. Whereas if I was allowed to use my arms, I'd probably just make the contact like that, which would be ineffective as a tackle. So we're trying to get shoulder on. To do that, we need to get feet in close. So boys, what did making your steps smaller do for you in, in the tackle? Um, it felt a lot better. Uh, it allowed me to get my feet in closer. I had a lot more balance and um, it was like better contact, you know, it was able to drive through. And, yeah. You'll notice when we were doing our, our tracking activity uh, that we were getting the player's head into a really safe position. So if we have the ball carrier coming in here and the tackler making a, a tackle on his right shoulder, we're trying to get the right foot in close to, to the ball carrier and right shoulder making the contact, head to the side of the player rather than in front of him. Okay, so not only is that safe, but that, that's the effective way to do it. Problem arises when uh, this player here wants to make that right, right shoulder tackle, but the ball carrier doesn't allow him to because he steps back inside. So what we need to do is be able to be comfortable on, on either shoulder. And, and it's quite simply a matter of with this player coming in, this player coming forward, he steps this way. It's just changing the foot and changing the shoulder. So there's nothing complicated about it. It's just being able to, to go from right shoulder, right foot, to left shoulder, left foot. Now these boys have got, um, you'll see on the jerseys, they've got the great fern over the heart, brings hairs up on the back of your neck, Adidas on, on the other side. So what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk about getting Adidas on Adidas as a, as a tackler and fern on fern. So if the player comes this way and steps that way to the right shoulder, it's Adidas hitting Adidas. 
If it steps the other way, it's fern hitting fern. It's a nice simple way for the boys to understand that, that we change. Okay, again, this is pre-tackle. We're looking at foot positioning and body positioning. Don't worry about the height of the tackle at the moment. We're, we're just purely talking tracking and getting into position to then make the tackle. The tackle we're going to deal with is, is a low tackle. Like the, the way the game is refereed today and the law interpretations, there's a lot of risk associated with a high tackle. Firstly, uh, the ire of the referee, you know, you can, you can draw penalties um, from, from hits that are a bit, bit high. Secondly, the high tackle tends to lead to a bit of a wrestle with the ball carrier, which then gives the ball carrier's team an opportunity to get support players there and, uh, and improves their chances of ball retention. Whereas I think that the modern game today requires you to get the ball carrier on the, on the ground as quickly as you can. Uh, so low tackle is ideal for that, probably around the, the hip area and maybe sliding down uh, into the legs area. But certainly getting them, getting them to the ground really quickly, uh, that's your best way to, to maybe isolate the ball carrier and gives you the best opportunity to, to get a turnover. Now if we're teaching this um, to, to kids, for example, early in the season, uh, what I like to do is, is start, uh, make sure it's really safe and, and we're not getting injuries on hard ground or for guys that haven't been in contact for a while. So I like to start them on their knees. Um, just to demonstrate here, we've got a ball carrier. He'll be on his knee there. Uh, and, and so any player would feel in quite a safe position here doing this activity. I'm going to work on, uh, on the ball carrier is going to step that way just for the for the sake of this activity, and I'm going to work on hitting them in this area here and making sure that my cheek is really tight against his cheek. So it's really important that you get a tight grip, that whilst you're punching with your, with your shoulder through the impact, you're also wrapping with your arms and getting a nice tight bind between your, your cheek and, uh, and his cheek there. The other thing we're going to work on in this activity is the tackler landing on his front. That way you hold all the cards. If you, if you can land on your front, it means you can get up quickly. Um, you're the player, the tackler's the player that the referee is, is ruling. He's watching you, so therefore you've got to play within the law, which means getting up and then making your next decision uh, in that tackle area. If you're on the deck uh, as a tackler, you're liable to be penalised and you have no material effect on the game. You, you can't really do anything. OK, so the drill will be simply this. On our knees, ball carrier, Defender, tackler, landing up on top and then just getting up. What I'm going to do now is ask these boys to bring the stuff that we've been working on, the skills that we've been developing, bring it into uh, a tackle situation. So we've got an activity that we're going to go through here. I'm just going to add a couple more things in uh, that I want to demonstrate uh, because uh, we, we still haven't made the tackle yet. And, and as I said before, we want it to be safe as well as highly effective. So when we're doing this drill, we're going to be looking for several things. We're going to be looking for uh, small steps into the tackle so that we can get that, that leading foot in close to, to the ball carrier. We're going to be looking for uh, face up. Okay, and I use the term looking over the specs so that uh, as, we, as we drop into the tackle, uh, the face is up. We're able to sight our, our ball carrier so that if he moves sideways, we can move with him and, uh, and we're in a safe position rather than getting caught with, with the head down. And thirdly, we're going to look for the players to, to drop from the knees late. So rather than going to a tackle like this and, uh, and risk being beaten or risk getting caught in a, in a poor position, we're going to use our tracking to get into position uh, nice and close to the ball carrier, then dip late, face up, punch with the shoulder, wrap with the arms, cheek to cheek, and just drive through, um, just drive through the tackle. So if I use Hugh here as an example, as he's coming in, uh, he's going to be running here, I'm going to be coming in, I get my foot close, dip late, and push the Hugh to the side. OK, we'll just do that again. Into the tackle, dip late, face up, punch with the shoulder, wrap with the arms, and keep the feet moving through the impact. We're now going to take all those parts and put it into the hole. So we're going to complete the tackle. In this case, uh, the tackle's not completed until we're up on our feet again after, after hitting the deck. 
So here the, the, the tackler is going to make a low tackle, land on his front, get up quickly over top of the ball carrier and then make a decision. As I said before, you can't expect the ball carrier to just be a sitting duck for you to knock over. They're going to try and step you, use your explosiveness, try and uh, hit a weak side of the tackler. So it's really important when you're doing these activities that you're randomising them, that uh, you allow the ball carrier to step either way and, and make it quite competitive so that uh, he's trying to beat the tackler. Uh, that way you're really emphasising the need to be able to use either shoulder and, and from a safety perspective, you've got to be able to do that. If you're just a right-sided tackler, for example, that's OK if you're going to your right, but it means when you're coming to your left and you're having to tackle a ball carrier, you're going to get in a poor position with your head uh, in front of him. So head to the side, face up, make sure that you're able to see where the ball carrier is going. One thing I'm interested in, uh, and I'll ask these, these guys the question, uh, what they focus on uh, when they're making the tackle, because the tackler's trying to use his feet, do his magic. Uh, if you're watching those, you're going to get bamboozled. So what does the tackler look at? I like to focus on the core area, so the area above the hips, the stomach uh, region. Why? What, what, uh, why is that so important? Uh, because where the core goes, there you go. There you have it, coaches. Uh, that, that's a great explanation, where the core goes. So the, the stomach area is slightly above the hips. In this drill here, it's slightly above the, the Adidas stripes on the on the shorts, that's where this player's focus is because where that area goes as a ball carrier is where he wants to be to, to make the tackle. And that'll make it not only safe, but, but highly effective. Eyes always on the core, whether tackling around the ball or around the legs and move forward into contact. Try to position myself slightly inside the ball carrier, inside shoulder. Always keep my face up, keep my feet alive and position my leading foot close to the ball carrier. Drive with the legs making firm contact with the shoulder and make sure I keep my head to the side and keep driving. Punch my arms forward and wrap around the ball carrier. Continue power drive through to complete the tackle and try to end up on top of the ball carrier. Release and get to my feet as fast as possible before I can recover the ball.